What up? In today's video, we're gonna talk about my favorite type of K vehicle, K vans. I can honestly say that if it wasn't for K vans, this channel would not be where it is right now. I bought my first K car about three years ago. It was a 1991 Daihatsu Hijet. I got it for like $5,000. It was clean. It was my first ever right hand drive vehicle. It was a four speed. At the time, I didn't really understand the difference, and it was fun while I had it, but it rode its course. So I'm no stranger to owning two-seater cars. I owned six Miatas prior to my first K-Truck, but there's a big difference between owning a two-seater car and a K-Truck. For one, it's a lot smaller, it's a lot slower, and if it's raining or you need to have a lot of things in the car, all you have is this pickup bed. I didn't have a cover at the time. I didn't have anything to put back here if it started to rain. And living in New York City, the pickup bed was basically useless for me. I never used it, which led me to sell my first K truck. And that's when I bought the Mitsubishi Bravo. So that's when everything changed because at that point, it was like I had a real car. I took my Bravo on several road trips. I was able to have four people in the car with me. It was a lot more comfortable. I had power windows all around. I had AC. I had all the amenities that I needed in a normal normal regular car just squished in a little tiny box. And I've mentioned this cycle before, but I feel like the K car cycle consists of most people's first introductory to a K vehicle is a truck. They buy something like this. It's usually the cheapest, the two seater, it's fun. You got the pickup bed in the back. It's kind of the most iconic K. But then after a while, it's just like, you know, you got this two seater car, you're not using the bed every day. You want to have more people in the car with you. You want something a little more safe. You want a little more amenities. So you sell your K truck and then you get a K van and now now you start to get additional room. You're able to put your seat back. This one has the glass roof. Just like your K-Truck, you have all this space back here, but now with a closed top. Now you're on cloud nine, sitting in the back of your K-Van, chilling. You got all your homies here. You can put the seats back. But then after a while, you're like, mm, this car isn't really aerodynamic. It's slow. If it's super windy, the van starts going all over the place. So then some people just keep vans and then some people sell them. And the next thing they buy, something like this. So with this, you still get four doors. You get a lot of space. You can fit four people. The seats fold down flat, so you get some storage. It isn't as much as a van, but it's a lot more than a K truck. A lot of the times these cars are turbo. They're four wheel drive. They're peppy. They're a lot quicker than a K truck and K van. Some people like myself even go the Jimny route, but in my opinion, this really isn't a K car. This is a right hand drive Samurai. This is basically a right hand drive Chevy Spark. Same goes for the Honda Beat. That's basically a right hand drive Miata, and the list goes on. It isn't really a K because I personally feel like the K experience is when you're sitting on top of the wheels. An honorable mention because I made a video on this car. I think deck vans are cool. I don't think they're better than K vans because again, I live in New York, so having this open bed is really useless. I'm not gonna put anything back here. I just think it looks cool, but these are very fun. These are nice. You still can seat four. You can put this seat down if you want some additional storage. I think deck vans are cool, but if we're talking about longevity, I would 100% own a K-Van before a deck van. Even if it's a super cool try that's turbo, four wheel drive, five speed with the glass roof, Yes, I would still take a K-Van over this. So with all that being said, in today's video, we're gonna talk about the most slept on K-Van, the Suzuki Every Joy Pop. Out of my 200 K vehicles, I don't think I've ever made a full video on one of these. I feel like whenever people think about K-Vans, they think of Honda Active Street, they think of Subaru Sandbar, and they think of Mitsubishi Bravo. They think of the Hatsu Hijet mostly because the name, but I don't see a lot of Hijet vans either. And then lastly, and mostly forgotten, is the Joy Pop. I don't even think a lot of people know that the engine's in the back. I think a lot of people feel like the engine is under there because that's how the K trucks are. But over here is actually where the engine is on the vans. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys a bunch of different Everys. We're gonna drive one and hopefully by the end, the Joy Pop will get some respect. First on the list is this white Suzuki Every. Comes on some black rims. This is a Joy Pop. It's actually automatic, which is cool. The clusters and everything here looks pretty identical to the trucks. You have the un and unlock for the back gate. This one has AC. It's a three speed, not CVT, which is good. Has a split seat back here with one armrest. And I would say that Everys for the most part, I'm gonna give them, they're like middle tier when it comes to amenities. I think the Bravos are probably top tier. Daihatsu sometimes is top tier too, but this one has roll windows all around. On the Bravos, they have power windows, but this is still, in my opinion, a pretty cool van. It looks different. You don't really see them around. So this is number one. 
Next, we have the car that I'm probably gonna be driving in this video. This is another Suzuki Every Joy Pop, but this one is turbo, has a little more amenities. This guy has power windows only in the front, which is a nice touch. It has rear heat, doesn't have lock and unlock for the rear gate, which is pretty interesting, seeing how it has power windows and a turbo. But amenities and interior-wise is pretty much exactly the same. You got the two cubbies right there, headliner, everything is clean. A nice van. They said that this drives like a dart, so I cannot wait to drive it. Third, and maybe my favorite every out of the bunch, is this one. This is another Joy Pop. This one is four-wheel drive. Here's how it looks with the seats down. This one has a really nice interior. The seats fold down completely flat, which is nice. The Actis do this. The Bravos kind of stop right there. And I'm not sure if the sandbars do it, but the way you put it up is pretty straightforward. You just grab it and then it actually comes down right here. And this is kind of shaped a little funny, if you know what I mean. But you just put it over there, slide it in, and then the seat goes up like that. And look at that pattern. It's like a cream slash funfetti. Do you see the little like dots, the multicolored dots in there? I'm loving that. And then even the interior isn't like gray. Do you see it? It's kind of like a little like off gray, greenish little like moss color. Another good thing about this one is that it's push button four wheel drive. The other two models were full time four wheel drive. This one is rear wheel drive, which makes it a little peppier until you press that button. Comes with axle lock, rear heat. Again, no button for the gate, which is odd. Back here, you have an ashtray slash coin holder. And my favorite Suzuki everything is the fact that you have a little basket here. No other K truck has that. Back here, you have an ashtray slash coin holder. And up here, by far my favorite Suzuki every mod, you have a little cubby that can store some things. I've never seen another K van with that. In comparison, before I show you some other vans, here's what the Daihatsu deck van interior looks like. Big Pro, I'm not gonna lie, it has four power windows. That's actually very rare. But the cluster and everything else is pretty much the same. No cool little basket. This one's a deck van, so you don't even get a split seat, which I think is really nice. Subarus have a couple cool quirks on them too. They usually come with cup holders back here, which is a really nice pro, but you don't get cubbies in the back, which I really like on K-Vans. And then again, interior, pretty straightforward. Push bump four wheel drive, AC, nothing really fancy back here. I mean, I guess you get a light, but that definitely is not factory. Next, we have this Daihatsu Libero. I have mixed feelings about this because it's a three door. I feel like the whole K-Van experience, in my opinion, is having dual sliding doors. But if I'm being honest, this is definitely the most loaded K-Van here. You got the glass roof, it's automatic, has a funky little interior pattern. You got some cool storage and cubbies on this side. Still has roll up windows all around, but this is definitely one of the nicest vans here. Now let me start one of these Everys just so you can hear how it sounds. Cluster is pretty basic. The way you put the seat down is pretty interesting too. You have to pull this. And then it goes down and kind of release it from this little latch, you see? And like I mentioned earlier, it's mid-engine, so it's very similar to the Honda Street. You get a cool engine note behind you while you're driving. You know what? I'm going to drive this one first. Before I drive the turbo, let's see what a normal four-wheel drive Suzuki Avery feels like. I love kit cars that come with selectable four-wheel drive. You don't get a lot of power in these anyway, so when you have full-time four-wheel drive, you lose what you have. And then you also don't get the best MPGs. But well, let's see what this feels like. This honestly might be the first time I'm driving one of these on the street. Loving that mid-engine. Comfortability-wise, it feels good. Speed-wise, it's, you know, pretty straightforward. It's a K-Van. If I gun it... Ooh, you hear that? Do you hear that? <laughs> That's only 60 kilometers an hour, by the way, but do you hear that? It almost has a little whine to it. Oh. I could see one of these in my near future. I want one just like this with a cubby, just with a turbo. Give me a turbo and I'm gonna really be in love. Brakes feel good. This feels smooth and like, you know me, I love to go against the green. That's why I got a Bravo in the first place. If you guys remember that video, I was choosing between a Honda Acti Street and this was three years ago before I even knew a lot about the K scene, but I still felt like I saw Honda Acti Streets all over the place and I've never seen a Bravo and that's kind of what led me to buy it. But this, as someone that, you know, travels, go looks at K cars all the time, drives them all the time, Think about the amount of every videos I've made. Think about the times you've ever seen Everys. I've never seen one like this. I've never even seen one like this nice. I've never even really seen one with power windows like the turbo one. So like this is a car that I feel like needs some respect. 
I'm gonna now drive it in four wheel drive. Let's see if that makes any difference. And I'm doing all this with the AC on, radio works, rear wiper. It's a little slower, obviously, like I mentioned. Still feels good though, still feels comfortable. I just love K-Vans, like K-Vans are the best K-Car. I don't care what anyone says. Cappuccino's cool, Beats cool, AZ1's I think are the worst K-Car. I think AZ1 is like a disgrace to all K-Cars. Like no K-Car should be $20,000. And this is coming from someone who wants to buy one before this year's over, but it's just ridiculous. Like I could buy five K-Trucks. I could buy like four K-Vans for the price of one AZ1. Like we all need to come together as a community and like, <laughs> Just drop the price somehow. We need to stop buying them for $20,000. But here's an acceleration test on four wheel drive. Still gets up there, still has a great note. This is in third gear, mind you. Just learned the new amenity on the Joy Pop. Power locks all around, that's pretty clutch. Sadly, that's a customer's car, so I won't be driving the turbo every in this video. But now, I'm going to work my way to JDM Hawaii. And over there, they have a couple different versions of the every. So at JDM Hawaii, I have four more everys I'm going to show you. Here's one, two, three. And then they have a limited edition one in the back. First one we're going to look at is this silver Suzuki every join. So this is not a joy pop. It is a join. It's still four wheel drive, but I believe this is more of a like base model. A couple differences we see right off the back. You have a bench seat instead of the split seat with the armrest. You have no cubbies back here. These are actually both joins, but this one's a join limited. So I'm going to show you a couple differences in a second. But this one doesn't have a keyhole here. Whenever you see this in a K truck or K van, just know that's a lower trim model. So here's how the interior looks. You got your standard bench seat. This still folds down completely flat. Interior wise, it's pretty much exactly the same. There's not much differences. There's no power windows, obviously, but you still have the rear wiper. You still have the buttons to unlock the back and then you have axle lock. This one is also push button four wheel drive. So although these are both joins, this one being a join limited means you don't get the bench seat. You get the cool four way seats, which means you can have this one down, this one up, but you still don't get the cubbies back here. And this one is not four wheel drive. So you just have a normal shifter with no push button four wheel drive. No axle lock on this one either. Ooh, no rear wiper either. Wow. You get the split seat, but you don't get a lot of the other little amenities. Next, we have a car that's kind of stumping me right now. So this is another Suzuki Every. This one is a Joy Pop. So I assume that it would have a keyhole here. It doesn't. It does have a split seat though, but it doesn't have cubbies back here. These Suzuki models got me all messed up, but this one has the lock and unlock for the back, no axle lock. It is two wheel drive, so you don't have the push bone four wheel drive. But again, interior wise, they're all pretty much the same. Some just have some cubbies. Again, none of them have that little cool thing up here. Before I show you that last white Suzuki every, if you made it this far in the video, like, comment, and subscribe. We got a lot of fun videos to make. I still want to drive that Rocky, but this guy, so this is a Suzuki every join. But this is a limited edition model that came with a rotary. So this model has a really low production number because it came completely gutted like this. All they gave you was a Turbo 13B. Nah, just joking. This is obviously a car that's a detailing. I just want to show you guys that there is a lot of models of Suzuki Everys. I didn't realize that it looked like this, so I want to show you guys a cool little Easter egg. But I'm in this video here. We still got a week left in Hawaii. A lot of fun videos still to come. I still gotta drive this Rocky. We drove the Domingo. I don't think there's many cars here that I haven't drove before. I think for the most part, everything here is pretty standard. Oh, look, another every over here. I didn't even know this was here. Oh, look, a round headlight one. Ooh, we got to talk about this. I was going to end the video and look at this little Easter egg. So this is a 1997 Suzuki every with round headlights. And as we can see, the interior is a bit different. You have no buttons. Wow. This, I believe, is just a regular, I don't think this is called a Join or Joy Pop. Yeah, it's nothing. It's just called a Suzuki Every. This is like the male van that like is super, super bare bones. You have no buttons here, no rear wiper, has AC, but as you can see by the headliner, even the seats, like the seats are this material in comparison to the other van. I'll show you what that looks like. But this is your very, very, this must be like the lowest, lowest trim level of Suzuki Every's. Like, look at these seats. These are similar to the K-Truck with this little material. 
And then every single every we looked at has had some type of pattern. This one is black. The green one over there had that cool like beige's funfetti. And then this one has seat covers, but it has the same exact seats as that one. But now I'm gonna really end this video here. Catch you guys on the next one. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace. Remember the name. This is way before the fame.